Hello and welcome to our NCAM facility tour. My name is Rory and I'm a senior research engineer at the MTC and I usually can be found working on aerospace production projects in additive manufacturing in the workshop. Today we're going to be doing a tour of the NCAM's new facility uh, with a slight twist. Obviously with the global pandemic situation we can't be there in front of cameras with a lot of people so what we've done is we've got some pre-shot footage and uh, I'm going to be narrating it from the, the comfort of my own kitchen. Uh, now without further ado we're going to go into the facility we're going to give you an update about the latest machines that have been installed and give you some insight into uh, what, what some of the aims and objectives are of the facility. So let's get started. So one of the first areas you're going to walk into is the collaboration space within the cell. This is where the NCAM team and UK manufacturers can work side by side on their AM projects, whether it's reviewing a design file or understanding how the AM process works. This area has been designed with collaboration in mind and ease of access to the viewing of equipment and the various processes that happen in the additive manufacturing uh, process. Next, we're going to be moving into the changing rooms. Now, this is where, of course, we have to get changed into the relevant uh, PPE and RPE that is vital to ensure uh, safety is maintained within the process. And as you'll see, I've just walked across a adhesive uh, mat and that's just to minimize any powder travel. And that's one of the areas that the National Centre has been really uh, interested in and of course throughout the drama project is going, what is powder travel like? What's the relevant uh, safety measures that you should be taking? And this is all information that will uh, later be on the Knowledge Hub uh, if it isn't already there now. Next, we're going to be moving into the build area. You'll notice that the build area is set up to be open plan and reconfigurable. So process lines can be set up to meet changing needs of the collaborative projects and of the partners that come into the space. The facility houses the end-to-end -end process chain with multiple different AM platforms and materials housed in these segmented bays. The intention is to support hands-on learning within the facility uh, so that the aerospace supply chain can develop their production requirements for processing uh, the processing of components that can be replicated on their own sites uh, once it's proven within this cell. Uh, the machines that you see here today have been purchased in one of three ways, whether it's through the MTC's membership scheme or through leases or through direct purchases. So one of the first and most impressive machines that we come into contact with is the Renium 500Q. And so this is a laser powder bed fusion additive manufacturing system designed specifically for the production of metal components. It features integrated sieving and powder recirculation, which is great uh, for health and safety as it reduces operator exposure to powder. Uh, the build volume on this machine is 250 by 250 by 350 millimeters in the Z type and it actually has four 500 watt euterbium fiber lasers and each one of those lasers can reach all parts of the powder bed and they, they do all sorts of fancy things by working in tandem to increase uh, build speed amongst other features. Uh, this system can build a range of metals including uh, Ti 64, cobalt, chromium, stainless steel, nickel alloys, etc. So, moving on, moving to some of our smaller LPBF machines, we've got an EOS M280 uh, and uh, AM250 from Brennershaw. These machines have been absolute workhorses of the National Centre. Uh, they typically have a build volume of about 250 by 250 by 300 or 325 in the EOS's case. Uh, and again, they can be very reliable and uh, we've, we've had a lot of good research uh, come through them and that's why they're still uh, with us. Uh, so moving on, 
and just now going into the larger areas where we've got some of our, our bigger machines the first and most striking you'll see is the add-up a wonderful vibrant purple color the so add-up is a, a joint venture between fives group and michelin these giants of uh, industry have helped add up develop uh, pretty rapidly a, a range of machines and, and they've also looked into automated factory solutions for AM amongst other things. So the machine we have here is the, the Formup 350 and as with all things AM the number after the names uh, alludes to some feature or function of the machine and in this case it's, it's build volume, it's got a build volume of 350 by 350 by 350 uh, millimeters and it's been developed to be compatible with both non-reactive and reactive powders and it's got a dual 500 watt laser and a heated platform uh, and so this machine can do stainless steel, TIE 64, Inconel, uh, aluminium and, and can has a, a layer thickness between 20 to 120 uh, microns. It's also got a filter module to the right which uh, they're, they're uh, purporting that that can extend the, the service life of the filters up to one, one year, which is good because that, that means uh, less, less touching of uh, filters for operators. And it's also got a, a autonomous powder module that is integrated uh, vacuuming and, and sieving, which recycles the powder and then feeds it directly back into the machine. So. One of the, the next machines and one of a uh, uh, sort of personal favourite of mine is the Arcam EBM Q20. Uh, so Arcam, uh, they're a, a Swedish company that's been bought by uh, G uh, a couple of years ago, maybe three or four years ago. Uh, this model here we have is the Q20 Plus, which is specifically designed for cost-effective production of aerospace components. Uh, such as turbine blades or structural aerofane components. The build envelope allows for building large components and is, you can stack components uh, on top of one another. Uh, the electron beam melting process takes place in a vacuum and it's up at elevated uh, temperatures resulting in stress relief components and materials on par with cast parts and you actually don't have to balance all these Plate, uh, parts off the base plate, they, 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 they come up, uh, they, they can build off of the base plate if you need to. Uh, it's got max build size of uh, 350 diameter by 380 millimeter in the Z height and a beam power of 3000 watts and a layer height of 50 to 90 microns and an insane electron beam translational speed of 8000 meters uh, per second. So for us, it's quite good to have both electron and laser powder by fusion systems in the same facility as they're different tools uh, and, and at different times they, they can be used uh, for, for different projects. And it's good to highlight that, that uh, you know, that there's, there's no perfect solution in that of, and, and each of one of these systems have a, a different use and, and that's, that's, that's something we're always keen to uh, highlight. So uh, what do we have next? Okay we've got the Trumpf. So Trumpf, incredibly interesting company, uh, massive in Germany. Uh, uh, so they Trump mostly known for their industrial machine tools and laser manufacturing company so it almost seemed a, a perfect marriage for them to get into uh, additive manufacturing. They did so in the early 2000s. Here we have the TruePrint 3000 which is designed for flexible serious production as they call it of, of metal parts and this one in particular has a, a build area of 300 millimeters in diameter. It's a cylindrical build tank and a 400 millimeters uh, Z height. Uh, they have quite a neat replaceable build and supply uh, chamber sort of cylinder system and uh, that means you can maintain a, a decent production rate with them and also the way that you th they, uh, seal the powder off uh, from air to keep it in an air atmosphere is quite uh, novel. 
Uh, this, this system itself has a 500 or a dual 500 watt lasers, layer thickness between 20 to 150 microns, which is good for detail or then speed knobs and melt pool monitoring. And it can use uh, materials such as stainless steel, steel steels, aluminium, nickel, and, and titanium. So these are our, our major uh, systems, and, and in the background you can see uh, our EOS M400. I should have mentioned that, but there's a EOS M400 uh, 4, which is uh, just being installed. Uh, that's got four 400 watt uh, lasers in it, and uh, within the system you have this option of uh, well, within the very large build tank, you can move the build tank uh, within the, the system into a, a powder uh, processing area where you can clean off the powder of the parts, which is quite good, again, for just reducing the, the exposure of, of the powder to uh, the operators. And that, for us, has been quite a good machine in the National Centre for Arts Manufacturing. We've seen a lot of interesting companies using it and, and wanting to use it. So it's good to see that getting up and running uh, in the new facility. So moving into the next area is the powder processing room. So as we're looking to minimize open powder work in the main build area, this is where the majority of the powder processing will be conducted. And, uh, you know, for, for things like uh, sieving, uh, blending, uh, part depowdering, uh, topping up of powder, that the majority of that will happen in this uh, area. The area itself is temperature and humidity controlled and it's fully reconfigurable, as you can see from all the outlets and the walls uh, and, and those, those, those that, that sort of how the, the area is set out will, will change depending on the customer's or so the, the manufacturer's preference at the time. Now, moving out of this area, we're going to go into the post-processing area. And now this is where we'll be dealing with all of our parts once they're out of the machines and free from powder. One of the, the first things you see is the automated a uh, bandsaw from Katsuwin uh, and this has been specifically designed for additive manufacturing. You actually put a base plate in it and uh, a little bit of programming uh, it chops the parts off and they fall neatly into a, a bay where you can collect them and again it's just uh, removing the need for operators to be close to that process which is uh, good from a safety aspect. Just moving around we also have the chef unit from Acton Finishing, which is a centrifugal high energy finishing machine, which uses media in a barrel to improve surface roughness of parts. And to complement this uh, capability that we have, we also have the extrude hone uh, process, and that's an abrasive flow machine, which utilizes abrasive media applied at high pressure to change the surface of AM components and that's mostly focusing on internal channels and hard to reach areas of complex shapes. And finally, to round off uh, the area, we've got a blasting cabinet uh, and also a hooded extraction bench for manually removing the supports and finishing of components. Now, we're just going to go into the inspection area. So this has got a couple of neat features. Uh, one of the, the first and uh, I, would, I would say quite vital areas you've got to have is an inspection bench. And this is a, a very fancy one by my standards. It's got multiple light levels and colors. Uh, you can inspect your parts mostly for any visual uh, indications of defects and, and with all the the colors and light levels, this makes this really easy to do. Uh, moving on, we've got a Zeiss CMM machine. So that's again, just looking to check the components are the right size that they're meant to be. Uh, and what else do we have in here? So we've got 
Ah, the classic. We've got Nikon XET 225. This is great for looking at uh, components to see what their internals are like. Is there any powder still in there? Are there any indications of any internal defects that we need to spot? And uh, XET has been a, a very a good method of doing that. Thank you for joining me on that tour. Hopefully it was a good insight into the facility and some of the processes that go with additive manufacturing, whether it's designing of the parts, whether it's using the machines or looking at the post-processing steps or the ancillary equipment such as blending, sieving, uh, depowdering the parts or later going on to the inspection and metrology side. Uh, they're all really important steps and they're something we really are keen to highlight uh, at the National Centre for Additive Manufacturing. And on that note, we're going to be launching our new YouTube channel, uh, Layers, shortly. And that channel is going to go into more detail about all these various other steps and not just about what's happening at NCAM, what's happening uh, further afield in the UK and hopefully maybe the world uh, as it grows. And if you have anyone that's interested in joining that or being on the channel, uh, drop me a line and hopefully we can get that sorted out in the near future. So once again, thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day.